boy, do I have something exciting to show you guys today. Um, it, uh, it's been a while since I've done a video. Um, just been crazy busy this year and uh, I figured it's time to get back on track. Um, so a little backstory on what we're going to do today. Um, I had a guitar that I built for a client uh, about two years ago with Bob Dylan inlaid on the fretboard and his brother gave me this little piece of wood about that big and he said, uh, can you tell me what this is? And uh, I knew right away that it was Cocobolo, which um, for those of you guys who don't know, Cocobolo is a rosewood from Central America and uh, South America and parts of Mexico. And uh, it's an incredible tone wood for guitars. And uh, I mean, a lot of the big builders use it. Um, it's kind of similar in tone to, to Brazilian rosewood, not quite, but uh, just a killer tone wood. Anyway, so I said, so tell me about that wood. Um, what's the deal? So you show me this little piece, what do you have? He's like, well, he's got more of it. And uh, so uh, we got in contact with one another and he, he's like, well, I've got this beam that I bought while I was in Panama and uh, it's eight feet wide or eight feet long by 12 inches wide by eight inches thick, which is like ridiculously huge for this type of wood. And uh, he basically said, you know, you can have the beam if you build me a guitar out of it. And uh, he lives about three hours from here and he brought that piece of wood over about two weeks ago, and today we're gonna go take it and get it milled, uh, roughly milled, down into like two inch thick beams so that I can actually fit it on my bandsaw and, and saw it into um, guitar back and sides. So, let me show you this piece of wood. And there it is. In fact, my help just showed up, they just pulled in. Look at this thing. And it weighs about 400 pounds, according to the math. Uh, and we're gonna take it up to my buddy Luke Langford up in Ponce de Leon, and uh, he's got a sawmill. Uh, but man, I'm super excited. I got Steve Ortner and Matt Miller, two of my good friends, showing up today to help me move this piece of wood. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be super cool. Look, there he is now. <laughs> I'm shooting, I'm shooting a YouTube video for whatever. I'm, I'm gonna put it together <laughs> for my YouTube channel. Oh, there you go. Say hi, Steve. Hey. <laughs> Gotta do everything around here. He's, he's, trash cans. he's bringing my trash cans in for me. <laughs> He's Matt, Christ, you know how it's got rock. Mr. Miller. Hey, Matt, how are you? <laughs> so you haven't seen it yet, have you? No. So the beam of wood is over here. Oh. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, it was, uh, are those hand tooling marks so on it? The whole thing was hand cut to the shape that it's in now. So it was apparently cut by the natives in Panama. And... Pretty badass, isn't it? Huh. It weighs 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a dolly? Because uh, that would have been what you, you just rock it back and yeah. roll it out. Do you have one of those? Yeah. Uh, might be, that might be that that's, might be the move right I think there. It's a little too heavy for a dolly. You think? <laughs> yeah, it's just, I know. <laughs> 150, 200 pounds on a dolly. That's 400 at least. Yeah. 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 But uh, the dolly, we just picked this bad boy up. Everybody, let me know if you need the bail. Yeah. Good. Lay it down gently. Watch your arm. Cookers. <laughs> Ready? One, hold two, on, three. Hold on, hang on, hang Watch, on. right. Just hold pick on. up. Camera? Oh shit, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on the way to Luke's house and we're gonna get this thing hopefully um, just cut down to, um, I'm thinking like two inch slabs, inch and a half slabs. Should be able to get, I think, between three or four because we're obviously gonna have some waste on uh, around the edges because it's not, it because it has been cut by hand, um, it's got some uh it's not perfectly flat on any side so we'll see what happens uh luke's got to do a uh, he's also one of the local musicians in the area and he's got a, a gig to get to at noon and so we're gonna be just we gotta get it jammed out pretty quick and uh, but i also don't want to waste any of this really precious wood so we'll see what happens we'll see what happens we'll uh we'll, we'll uh turn turn you back on when we get there is that okay This is Luke. I'm doing it for my YouTube channel too. <laughs> He's gonna cut us some wood on that bad boy right there. Oh, it just looks really freaking hard. 
don't think there's going to be any metal in it. I haven't seen any holes. That wasn't what I meant. Ah, he means on the saw itself. I hope so, too. Yeah. Oh, That's what shit. I, meant. I understand. Some of these things require carbide tip blades, which I don't care if you don't have them. Really expensive, and I can't charge them. Yeah. But yeah, you, um, you know, and if we find that it's not, then you, you know, we'll uh, come back to the drawing board and uh, I'll buy a blade and come over here. I was hoping it would come to that. Because the carbides are, they'll cut everything, but. Sure, that's what I got on my resaw saw, and I, I spent almost as much on the blade as I did on the bandsaw. <laughs> How old is this machine? I bought it in 18. Okay. Man. That's some sawdust there. Look at this. It does. It's uh, got a 38 horse gas engine on it. That other one's got a 20. Wow. 24. Big, it's, a, it's a big beast. <laughs> there she blows. It's got a very sweet rosy smell yeah. to it. So that thing's water cooled, huh? It's super cool. Coca Bella. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's some of that beautiful grain there. So we've done uh, one cut just to true it up, and Luke and I just, he wanted to see how the blade would run, how the blade would run through it, because you just never know. And uh, it seemed to cut pretty good. And uh, so we're gonna do, uh, cut this into thirds. We're gonna do two, two and one eighth inch thick slices out of here, which would give me some room to, to do some resawing when I get back to the workshop with it. So, yeah. <laughs> That was cool. Well, we got the wood cut. Uh, Luke uh, smashed his finger open, and we broke a blade. Uh, we feel guilty pulling out of here. We feel terrible. Like he's got a uh, he's got a show to go play, and so it was like we're gonna go cut this wood, and, and you're see ya. The wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Uh, the most uh, important finger on his right hand. Yeah, and so we smashed his finger. He's got to go play guitar. 
And uh, and we broke his blade. <laughs> See, thanks, buddy. See you later. I'm getting out of here. But uh, so I got to get him a nice bottle of bourbon or something. And um, but yeah, the wood's back in in, in the back there, and um, we got it cut down to some super thick, like uh, got like two two, two, two eight sixteenths. Yeah, some good thick slabs. Because the main thing was I just needed to get it to the point where I can physically pick it up and process it myself. And uh, I don't, we almost had no waste. There was no. one little sliver we got. Let's and make uh, good trim. Piece, yeah, you know, make some binding out of it. But when when we get back to the shop, I'll I'll we'll, uh, I'll show you guys everything that we that we we're able to get. It, the, um, the, the what was unex, unexpected, but obviously makes sense is that the the, the sawmill is, is water cooled to keep the blade cool. Uh, so the wood now is it's got water on it it's on the surface. So it's such a dense wood that it's not a concern that that water got down into it. Um, but so. I'll, Obviously, I'll need to let it dry for a week before uh, I try to do any resawing. But man, super excited! Um, it's beautiful out here. This is a uh, Ponce de Leon, Florida, where we ended up coming out to. Just beautiful country out here. But uh, yeah, man, we'll see you back at the shop. Dishes right here. Isn't I know. That amazing? So we're just gonna do some uh, sweep off the sawdust. How they've come out so some of this ended up kind of flats on a little bit rifts on and a couple of quarter sawn pieces which is nice um, it's obviously a little tough to tell in the Sun right now here with the water on it but that's kind of how she'll look especially like right there with some finish on it but uh, we're gonna I'm gonna let this dry let it dry in the Sun for a little bit and then um, flip them over and dry the other side and then I'm gonna get them processed down in the uh, in the workshop I'm gonna slice them into kind of billets for the sides billets for the back and then I'll process them on my bandsaw and get them kind of uh, set up to be uh, to air dry in the shop now this wood is like two three hundred years old so it doesn't really need to air dry but uh, on to the next step uh. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is figure out how we can um, we obviously want to get the maximum amount of wood out of these pieces uh, maximum set of, amount of back and side sets out of these pieces as we can and uh, if we're careful on this end when we process it we can really get this thing um, you know we can maybe if we're not careful get 20 sets and if I'm real careful I can maybe get 30 and when you're talking about you know a thousand dollars a set or 750 bucks a set that that adds up so um we're just really wanting to make sure that we two brains is better than one in this case <laughs> i don't know about that and steve's brain's only worth a half a brain so thanks buddy uh, <laughs> um, steve and i have been messing with it and i think what we're going to be able to do is we're going to get um we're going to be able to get 32 guitars out of it so it'll be 64 64 pieces of wood um which will give me 32 backs and 32 set side sets right um so we're gonna get we're basically gonna do four cuts on this board actually five five and we're gonna do 
four on this board, but we're, I'm just but basically right now just going to get them sliced this way, buck them up so that I can manhandle them onto my bandsaw. But we double checked, quadruple checked, and uh, the math's right. I think we could send a man to the moon with the math. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that we're going to be able to uh, to, to do this. And, and I mean, it's so perfect because we're only going to have like half inch, one inch, quarter inch wiggle room on most of these pieces that we're doing. Um, and we figured out at the very last second how we can get an equal number of backs and sides. Yeah, here's what we ended up with. There you go, shoot me. Yeah. Um, of course, the lighting is terrible out here. Um, this is what we ended up getting all that, that beam down to. Um, and the next step is going to be um, resawing it, which is the process of me then taking these beams and then slicing them this way um, down to about four millimeter pieces. Um, but this gets me to the point now where I can pick them up, <laughs> uh, which is a huge benefit. Um, these are all sides. So this will be, this is 32 guitars, guitar sides, and then the rest of this is 32 guitar backs. Um, if we get it perfect, I mean, you're inevitably going to end up with some waste. We've got some pieces that are, they maybe are a little bit curved, so we maybe won't be able to get a full usable piece out of it. But so, I mean, in the end, I think that I'll be really happy if we can get 28. I think is my target. We actually probably get 30, but 28. Hell, I'm happy with 25. <laughs> okay, it's the next morning, and um, as you can see, we've got. All the back sets over here. And I've also got the side sets over here. And I kind of had an idea laying in bed last night, which makes me glad that I kind of slept on it before I resawed all these pieces. Um, I thought that maybe I could put them on my CNC machine and um, program out a way to cut out some more accurate profiles of the backs and sides before I put them on the resaw. Um, that way I minimize um, wasted wood, which I think is actually going to work out well. So we'll head over to the CNC machine and I'll show you guys what I'm kind of thinking and we'll just see what works and what doesn't work and uh, get to cutting. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a quick look at this. Uh, I just kind of messed around real fast. I actually took the, um, what would be the profile of the guitar back and then squared it off and then came up with this shape. This is overlaid, uh, that right there is overlaid of what it would be on top of these larger pieces like this. Um, the CNC machine would cut that out and then what I'm what I'm thinking is it would leave me a really nice section of usable wood in this area and sure I could do it on the bandsaw but the um, the beauty of doing it on the CNC machine is that two things I think in theory um, is that what it'll do is on this front edge it's gonna go ahead and mill me a perfect line so that it's just gonna need minimal touch-up um, in order to join the plates for the backs, which is really nice. Um, and also it's going to allow me to get really nice tight corners in here, which I can't get with the bandsaw, especially since I have a, a one inch thick resaw blade on it. Um, so I what I sacrifice is obviously a larger kerf. It's going to take out a quarter inch of material with the, with my, well, probably a three eighths inch of material with the, my bit that I'm going to use. And then, um, which as opposed to the, you know, the thickness of the curve on the resaw blade. But what I gain, I think, is worth it. Um, and the other beauty is that it's gonna cut this full two and a half inch thick piece of wood. Um, and so when I resaw it, they're all gonna be identical. They're all gonna be exactly the same. So if I cut it before I resaw it, I'll end up with a perfect, um, each piece of wood the exact same size, which is nice. Cause these are all mostly gonna be um, my grand session model. Um, and then I'll have enough wood left over, hopefully because of the CNC machine, that I can make a, a lot of um, 
um, tenor ukulele back and side sets, which will be hopefully useful. So, I think that's going to work really well. Uh, that gives me plenty of space to run it through the bandsaw, and then when I join this, it'll still be good and it'll fit all my templates that I use. Um, let's see, yeah. The templates that I use for making my, my sides with, you can see it fits half that really nicely. Um, yeah, man, this is gonna work well. And uh, on, on the other pieces, I'm gonna be able to get two cut out of it. So we'll, we'll get going. And what's nice too is that I've got this leftover, which doesn't seem like a lot, but, sorry. <laughs> but I think that it's worth it because of the cleanness, especially on this leading edge here. This is just absolutely perfect. Like, I probably won't even have to do any joining. Get it perfect. All the sawdust packed in here. But uh, so interesting, there's certain like you can see some of the sawdust is really light colored and some of it is really dark colored, which is super cool. We'll love me some Coca Cola. Uh, so, yeah, this will probably be the sides for ukulele. Um, it could be binding for ukulele, but uh, it's not the CNC machine cut is not as useful for this particular piece of wood. It's going to be those larger ones that I'm able to really maximize my cutout. So we'll keep pressing along. And uh, yeah, that worked out, man. That was a 3 8 inch uh, three flute bit. Yeah, man. Cool. Side to it that I the way that I build my guitars I have like a tab that goes right here to fit inside the molds but we can work around that. So now I'll have eight back pieces to resaw and eight side pieces to resaw which should give me if it goes perfectly 32 guitar sets or 64 pieces of wood. So let's see. Let's take this over here. We'll show you all the backs. So here is all the backs. 
ready to go. I think they came out super cool. As you can see, some of them, like around here, have got some spots that st still need to dry. This is where the end grain was um, when they got wet yesterday. Um, and that's part of the reason why I want to resaw them now, so that we can get them, uh, you know, cut and stacked in my shop, like the sets that I have up here. You know, these are all these are cedar tops that I've done in the past. So I'll get those resawed. Oh yeah, we also got this. So that's what we have so far. Eight eight guitars backs and the ukulele back. And each one of those should give me four pieces. So this is at least two, possibly three. And each one of those does the exact same thing. And then this is what I have left for scrap wood. Um, so this should be some ukulele sides or something. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I want this is ukulele sides for sure. And then uh, some of these are just going to be head plates. And then we also have all this to do. So what's left to do is um, all the, the sides for the guitar. So we'll do that next. And then uh, we will be done for the day. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying it. It's a lot of work so far, but I think it's going to be worth it. So we'll be back. Okay, so we've cut um, one of the, the, the uh, one set of sides on the machine, and it's been profiled. This is profiled perfectly for how I do my Grand Session body sizes. But it's almost impossible to clamp after it does it. I'm left with this slab, so I think actually what I'm going to do, I don't actually save wood on these side cuts with the CNC, I actually waste wood. So I'm actually going to cut the, the next three slabs on my bandsaw. Um, and then we could do that profile cut as I build the guitar. But uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's do that because we've got, take you off the tripod here. We've got those three pieces over here to cut over on the bandsaw. So let's do that. So now we've got all the billets. I've got eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight side billets, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight back billets. All of these four pieces are going to be for binding. Um, I've got a ukulele, and then I've got enough over here for one ukulele sides. Um, what we've got left is just head plates for front and back of the guitars, and this is a ukulele side. And then the rest of this is possibly some prairie ukuleles as well. So that's, I was able to get all of that wood process down to just that, which I'm super excited about. But what's really freaking awesome is check this out. Out of all of that wood, that entire log that I started out with, let's turn you over here. Out of that entire log, that's the scrap. That's all that I have for waste, is <laughs> this little bit of wood. I've got this larger piece here. The, um, the client that actually gave me the wood, this was the first slice that we took off um, on the sawmill yesterday, and he actually wanted a little sliver of wood that had the exterior um, 
tooling marks on it to have to hang up in his workshop. So I'm not even counting this as scrap. And if he wasn't taking it, I would actually be able to make a bunch of binding out of it. So it still wouldn't be scrap then. Um, so I just can't believe that out of everything that we did, all that is left is just this little bit of wood here. So I mean, talk about using all the parts of the buffalo. Um, so that's where we are. I think um, it is the holidays and I have family in town right now. But uh, the next step will be for me to take all these and resaw them on the bandsaw. And that'll be all that's left. Stack them, number them, um, and get them drying. I, I, this has just been a super cool project. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. Um, so we will turn the cameras back on again tomorrow. And all right, it's day three, and today's the day that I've been waiting for where we get to resaw these things. And uh, for those of you who don't know, resawing is now the process of taking the log, milling it down to pieces like these. These are called billets, and then you'll take this billet. I'm going to run it through my, my bandsaw here. This is a 19-inch Grizzly. What is this? This is the G0514X2 um, bandsaw, and it's a 19-inch, which means that you can cut a 19-inch uh, width piece of wood through it. But I upgraded it with a really nice resaw blade, carbide tipped. Um, how the blade alone costs half as much as this bandsaw, uh, which is going to pay off in a situation like this now, where I'm going to be able to um, to run all this wood through here, and I should just cut like butter. Uh, I, before I turned the camera on, I really took some time getting this dialed in perfectly. It really needed to be to the point where this blade is perfectly parallel with this um, the resaw fence. So. Um, I'm gonna try cutting this piece, see how it goes. Hopefully I should be able to get um, eight pieces out of it if, if I get it dialed in right. I mean, I expect that I'll probably have at least a couple of mess ups and lose some wood, but hopefully not. And uh, so we'll see what happens. Okay, I am super happy with how that came out. First try, something I need to do that I should have done before I cut, is I need to make sure that I get these oriented so that they stay in order. And in order to do that, you just, before you cut them is when you normally do this, but I'll actually come in here and get these set up like this. And I can just make random marks on it. And that way I can line up these marks if I lose the stack, if I forget which ones are book matched to what, I can just line these up. So let's see what they look like. Good. Obviously, the stack goes on and on and on. Let's move, to make some room. Yeah. So yeah, you get the idea, right? These all, all these stacks are just perfect. So I get, I get eight pieces per billet, 
or four guitars. Which is not bad, and I have eight billets. Which is what, 32? Yeah, should give me 32 guitars. And what, I'm, what I end up with is a, uh, this is all I've got for, for uh, scrap, and you can see that it's, you know, it's super thin, which is perfect. This is the, um, the outside of the wood that had all the rough saw marks on it, so that's perfect for me. I call that a win. Alright, so something that will now the next thing I need to do is kind of um, catalog these things. Um, so I'll show you kind of how that all works. Um, and I'm, mind you, uh, nobody's taught me how to do this. I've just kind of put the puzzle pieces together just off of what I see when I order uh, back inside sets. So now when we start putting these back together, you can see how these lines are going to start to uh, pay off. And you will be able to tell which ones go with which and in what order. And you don't, you know, that's just so that we can keep track of exactly how they sat inside the tree. But now we know that they're lined back up. So, as we'll just lay, lay that on there. Just do a quick trace. And I'm just going to number them so that we know what order they go. So it'll just be, I'll just write Coco 1, Coco 1, um, December 2020. So we'll do that with all these pieces. Um, just for catalog purposes, because as far as I know, you know, a lot of these pieces are going to take years and years and years for me to use. Um, and I'm obviously going to be building some guitars just to sell, just from just some uh, available for, for purchase pieces. I'm gonna, I plan on making a few for me. I love a Coca Bolo guitar, so I'm going to make some guitars for me. I've already got a couple of clients who have already spoken for some of these pieces, but we you know with 32 back and side sets, um, it's, it can be a decade before I use all these pieces. Uh, a couple of two. I'm just gonna write it on one side. And uh, this is just so that I know, you know, I wanna know how old it, how long I've had it air dried for. That's that's why I put the date on it. And uh, the numbers is just another insurance policy for me that if I do happen to lose uh, the orientation on them, that I know which sides, go, which back pieces go with one another. Okay, so it's occurred to me that this is probably going to take like, I don't know, the rest of the week to process um, a lot of this wood. It's uh, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot more than I anticipated time-wise to get all this stuff done. So I want to get it knocked out. Uh, I don't want to be taking up too much time with trying to set up videos and do all that stuff. I think you guys get the idea. Um, I think what I'm going to do is stop the video here and... Um, and the next video that I do, I'll, I'll show you guys what I ended up getting um, as far as how much wood came out of it all. Uh, but the process is going to be the same. What I've got to do, obviously, now that we know, I'm going to run these things uh, all through the planer to get a true surface. I'm going to run them through the, through the um, bandsaw, and then I'll come over here and stack them and catalog them and let them dry. Uh, I did run the moisture meter on these, and they do seem like they are a little bit wet. They are at about um, 10 to 11 percent moisture. And maybe that's just because the wood is so dense, it just hasn't gotten a chance to still fully cure. Uh, and the thing that really told me that was that these pieces just don't have the resonance that Coco Bolo normally does, which made me go, hmm, uh, maybe they're a little moist, so I put the moisture meter on them, and, and, and yeah, that's ended up ended up what, what it is. So I actually did restack these so that each piece has got room in between it. Um, so we'll let these air dry, too, and, and get them to open up some more. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I, I know that the audio quality is not nearly as good and the video quality is not nearly as good. And it, uh, I haven't shot any videos this year because I've been so caught up in like 
making sure I put out these high quality videos and it and it's just not working. Um, if I if I stop and set up my lights and get my good camera out and, and get my lapel mic, it's just too much too much of a time commitment. So this is a little bit more of a vlog style. Uh, I hope it doesn't um, take away too much from the video. And if you like it, you know, we'll keep it going. So comment in, in, in the comment section. Let me know if you like what we're doing here. If you've got questions, let me know. We can do more videos based off of those questions. And, and if this works out with the GoPro and just me talking and kind of showing you what we're doing here in the shop, then uh, it'll allow me to make a lot more videos. And I think as, as we get more followers and people subscribe and like all these videos, and we build an audience uh, together, that uh, it'll, it'll incentivize me to kind of do more high quality videos. So uh, I thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you do hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Share the video on social media if you've got, if you've got people who you think might be into this. And uh, thank y'all. I appreciate you very much.